everyone, Miss Catherine here from Aaron Public Library, back for another year of not so spooky stories. Now, today I'm not in the library, so we're doing this virtually. Next week I'll be back at the library, so make sure to come in and hear the stories. The week after that we're back to virtual because the library will be closed for um, a staff in service, and then after that we'll be back at the library again. So back forth, back forth, but it'll be so fun, and no matter what, you'll get to hear some spooky but not too spooky stories. Okay. My first book today is called Gilbert the Ghost by Guido von Gnechen. Gnechen, sorry, excuse me. And this is read with permission from Clavis Books. Gilbert the Ghost by Guido von Gnechen. From the day he was born, it was clear that he was different. I will call you Gilbert, his proud daddy said. Gilbert, his mommy smiled as she stroked his head. That name is perfect for a special ghost like you. Gilbert grew quickly. When the time was right, just like all the other young ghosts, he went to the ghost school and he made lots of new friends. In ghost school, the students learned how to stay up late because ghosts haunt when it's dark. Every night they floated around the school towers and played hide and seek among the parapet. Most of the time Gilbert joined them, but sometimes he stayed in his little room and daydreamed. <laughs> Gilbert loved floating classes and ghost history, but he did not like the classes with the principal. The principal wanted to turn the students into real ghosts, and one night he demonstrated what he meant. Boo! The principal shrieked, and he scared everyone. Boo! Annabelle yelled. Boo! Sebastian shrieked. Boo! Ignaz tried as well. Boo! Isabel copied him. Boo! Philip growled. Ba 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 hoo! Gilbert stammered. Everybody laughed really hard. Everybody except the principal. The principal was so angry he nearly jumped out of his sheet. A real ghost shouts, boo, he yelled, and nothing else. Gilbert couldn't do any better than a soft, bahoo. I'm sorry, sir, he sighed. I just can't do it. Gilbert was sent to the abandoned tower. The principal was sure that he would learn how to shriek there. Come back when you really know how to haunt, he called after Gilbert, or don't bother coming back at all. Oh, no. Gilbert's friends were deathly quiet as he floated away. In the abandoned tower, where even ghosts were scared to go, it was freezing cold and very dark. Gilbert shivered. He was all alone. At least that's what he thought. Then he heard a sound in the dark. My name is Meow, said an ink black cat. Welcome. I'm Gilbert, Gilbert said. You have a beautiful bow on your tail, Meow. <laughs> Gilbert and Meow became friends. They explored the tower together. In the basement, under a thick layer of cobwebs, they found some nice furniture and a chest filled with old rags. They decided to decorate the abandoned tower. They used the rags to make curtains and a tablecloth. When Meow wandered in the pasture nearby, he often picked a bunch of flowers because he knew that they made Gilbert happy. And late at night, when they sat in their chairs and listened to each other's stories, Meow would start to purr because he was happy too. The abandoned tower became their special place. Could you make a ghost sound again? Meow would ask sometimes. Bahoo! Gilbert would say, Bahoo! <laughs> and it made them both laugh. Weren't you afraid the evening I arrived here? Gilbert asked. Of course not, Meow said. I knew immediately that you were different and very special. And the other ghosts? They had all learned how to haunt and be terribly scary. They were sent out to old castles and tumble down fortresses that didn't have resident ghosts. They prowled around screeching and spread fear wherever they went. But when the young ghosts were tired of their own haunting, they floated toward the abandoned tower. Gilbert and Meow made them comfortable and served tea and homemade cookies. In the abandoned tower, the ghosts always were polite and friendly. They never deliberately spilled their tea, 
They said please and thank you. And these cookies are delicious. Would you happen to have some more? <laughs> and instead of screeching scarily, they said, Bahoo, quietly and gently, just like Gilbert. <laughs> the end. That was Gilbert the Ghost by Guido von Genechten. Wasn't that great? Gilbert could be a ghost in his own way. And he made a super cool friend named Meow. That's a fun name for a kitty. Okay, are you ready for another story? This next one is She Wanted to be Haunted by Mark Marcus Ewart and Susie Garamani. And this is read with permission from Bloomsbury. She Wanted to be Haunted by Marcus Ewart and Susie Garamani. Clarissa was a cottage, adorable and pink. Her paint was bright and sparkling. Her windows seemed to wink. Daisies grew around her, squirrels scampered on her lawn. Life was just delightful, and it made Clarissa yawn. See, her father was a castle looming on a crag, whipped by winds and cloaked in clouds, lit by lightning jag. Vampires dwelled within him, waltzing silently in the halls. Bats above, cold crypts below, and red stains on the walls. <gasps> Sounds scary. Her mother, on the other hand, was a witch's hut. Snakes dangled from her rafters, and the pots held who knows what. Rats and frogs and spells and smells, an old skull on a shelf. More creepy than the witch within was the hut herself. But Clarissa had a doorbell and a welcome mat. Wind chimed, tingle jingled, you can't get less cool than that. And unlike both her parents, Clarissa wasn't host to anybody scary, not even one Wayne ghost. I'm lonely, she admitted. I'm lonely and I'm bored. I'm just so ordinary. No wonder I'm ignored. If only I were haunted, I'd never be alone. But look at me, I'm cheerful. I've got to change my tone. I've got to look less friendly. I've got to look less fun. I'm sick of all this daylight. <gasps> I've got to block out the sun. She went to her father to ask him for some clouds. I need a veil of gloom, Dad, and shadows that enshroud. Of course I'll give you clouds, dear, but may I add advice? It's okay to be yourself. There's nothing wrong with nice. Clarissa thought that over, but left with clouds in tow. Back at home, she took each cloud and hung it up just so. Soon her skies were gray and grim, a drear forbidding sight. Who on earth would feel at home? A ghost or monster might. But oh, poor Clarissa, she'd made all her plans in vain. Cause what clouds bring isn't friends. What clouds bring is rain. <laughs> Silver strands came streaming down for seven days or more, and all it did was make Clarissa cuter than before. Honeysuckles twined around, roses grew in bunches. Birds swam in her bird bath and then shared poolside brunches. She longed to have her clouds back, but they had all dissolved. She was sadder than before, but also more resolved. Mm -hmm. She ran to see her mother to ask her mom for stench. Some smell, just one whiff of which would make one's nostrils clench. Mom, I need an odor that drives living things away. How else would I be a house where ghosts would want to stay? Of course I'll help you, honey, but this is what I think. A true friend likes you cause you're you, not because you stink. But Clarissa was determined and so her mom pitched in. Here's a smoking bottle that I once won from a gin. Unstopper it when you get home and it will pour out a reek. Normal kinds of creatures will be gone within the week. Clarissa took the bottle, forgetting to say thanks. Whoops! She raced home excitedly, a shiver in her planks. She uncorked the bottle and soon was wreathed in fumes. Nasty, noxious vapors billowed all throughout her rooms. But nothing died nor sped away, though the grass turned brown. And who was drawn toward the stink? <laughs> All the dogs in town. They rolled around adorably as doggies like to do. And instead of ghosts, fur filled the air. And lots of slobber too. I give up, Clarissa cried. I'll never get a ghost. I'm not remotely scary. I'm just 
unkempt at most. Though I've tried to change myself, I've only made things worse. Flowers, birds, and darling dogs? It's like some kind of curse. The cottage took a deep, deep breath. Can you take one with me? And then she softly sighed. Could she live a happy life without a ghost inside? Could she squash her longing for a special spectral friend? Either way, she knew her spooky plans had hit an end. Clarissa took another breath and then she loudly said, Listen, everybody, I'm done with the undead. Since no ghost wants to stay with me, I'll try something new. Pretty things can live here now, including all of you. Hooray, hooray, Clarissa, the gathering creatures cheered. But through that throng, from the back, a pathway slowly cleared. Down that path, a pony paced with golden hooves and horn. <gasps> All the sunlight shone upon a snow-white unicorn. I invited prettiness, Clarissa sadly thought. So I guess that's pretty much exactly what I got. <laughs> but sometimes life has funny plans that we cannot predict. The unicorn was vicious. <gasps> He bit and spat and kicked. He chewed up all the flowers and then tore up all the lawn. He ran at creatures with his horn until they were all gone. Ah! Oh my goodness, what a scary unicorn. Clarissa's never bored now for her best friend is a brute. And she can be herself at last. Horrible and cute. <laughs> the end. That was She Wanted to be Haunted by Marcus Ewart and Susie Garamani. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Not So Scary Stories. Did you like those? Now, we read two books about ghostly scary things. So be sure to stop by the library this week because we have a make and take ghost craft. Ooh. Mm. So be sure to stop by and grab that. Check out all the other really fun things we have going on all October. We're calling it Oddtober. So lots of fun creepy, scary, not so scary, but really fun things to do all month long. So thank you again for joining me. In the meantime, remember to, do you remember? Stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you at the library, okay? Bye! <laughs>